So the call comes through on a, a text message system. It's got an override alert, so I know it's a call out. Get myself in the car as soon as I can, respond saying, I'm coming, and then go. And honestly, it's that being jolted from sleep at five in the morning that just like, poof, something's going to happen, adrenaline goes. 20-year-old male fallen okay. in Duke's quarry. Mountain rescue! Hello, mountain rescue! Calm myself down. Know that when I get there, I'm going to be in the right frame of mind to do something meaningful and helpful. Derby base, Derby one, over. We're from Derby Mountain Rescue. We're here to help. My name is Dr. Natalia Kennedy, and I'm a volunteer with Derby Mountain Rescue Team. Just going to have a quick look at you, mate. Do you think you're OK? It's quite a big team. Um, there's, I think there's about 60 operational members at the moment, and that's useful because we'll get about sort of 50 to 60 call-outs in a year. So we've got 20-year-old It's fallen from somewhere up there, can't remember. Doesn't think he hit his head, but possible head injury. Not lost consciousness. Right arm, right leg injuries. So the Peak District runs from just above Derby in the south, Sheffield, on the east, Manchester on the west. So you get people coming over from the States and all over, professional climbers doing their stuff. Um, you get local people who are really used to it. Um, you've got a lot of these gritstone escarpments that are stunning to walk along, but the wind gusts up over them or you don't pay attention. Um, and you can have some pretty nasty falls. Evacuation equipment, so stretcher. We're going to need the back mat, etc. Uh, more details to follow, over. deep breaths, mate. So that's it. We're going to get an evacuation plan sorted out, which the guys up there will start to do. We'll get some kit in, get him um, probably immobilised on a vacuum mattress that will protect his spine and any other injuries and get him out of here as soon as we can. I wasn't sure about studying medicine, so I studied history. I played a lot of hockey at uni, and Sunday morning, actually, ironically, Remembrance Sunday, um, and one of my mates keels over on the hockey pitch in front of me, um, and is, you know, he's dead before he hits the floor, um, and he's had a, a cardiac arrest. Um, young, fit, healthy chap, utterly unexpected out of the blue. And I just remember that feeling of gut-wrenching helplessness. Um, and so that really made me go, right, how do I get into med school? How do I make this medical thing happen? I got to med school in Derby and then discovered the Peak District when I was in med school. Just to be clear, Kev, you're turning patient right turning, and I'm patient's head's coming round to the left. To there. So quite a lot of the rescues that occur in the Peaks are sort of known injuries, known locations, but it's still quite tricky to get people off from where they are with their injuries and get them to somewhere that an ambulance could get to. No, no, wait until you're right on the flat. Go, lift, lift, forward. Nice and slowly for the guy. We've got him loaded up in the stretcher, brought him out the uh, troublesome hole he got himself in. We're now going to get him down to a place where the uh, helimed can come and pick him up from. When you can rig a system as a team that allows you to assess someone who's stuck and get a stretcher there and bring them off and then get that stretcher to a waiting ambulance. That's a real feeling of achievement. There's a privilege in being allowed to wear a red jacket, which you get when you're accepted onto the team when you've completed your training. And there's a respect 
for each other that goes with that and a trust that goes with that. And that is at the heart of every team member.